Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and in this video, we're going to do an 8 point checklist that you should be doing with your resume and your resume should fit up with these checklists. Now first, I would like to give you a tip or advice at a point number zero that please don't panic. Eventually, you will land up in the job and it sometimes takes two months, sometimes take two days, sometimes take two years. But it's the constant of uh, keep on applying on the job and eventually you'll land up in one job or the other. So stop panicking. And it's not really a good idea to just throw your resume to every single company that you know and just randomly sending mail. Do a little bit study about the company, what this company do, what their goal is, on what stack they work on with, who is the founder, when was the company founded, is it a startup, is it a funded startup, is it a self-sufficient uh, startup, what that company is. So make sure you take this point zero very clearly, don't panic and read a little bit about the company. In the last video, I gave you a simple assignment of uh, preparing a resume. I hope you have done it. Now we're gonna first take a look on what are the common mistakes and then I'll go through with the checklist that you should be doing. So I'm pretty sure many of you have looked into a variety of these resume templates and you might have uh, stumbled upon this one or probably a little bit more on that. Now again, this one uses a bit of colors and Canva uses all the beautiful colors right out of the box. If you want to select this one and you'll click on this one, you'll still get a lot of beautiful color palettes that Canva uses. Canva is known for design, so that is always good. Now notice here carefully, we are gonna study in detail about it, but first let's take a glance on this particular resume. So I can see the person's name, software engineer, so what position he's applying for or where he's already working for. I can see the contact information. I am not reading it very carefully, but I know that if I know, if I want to have it, I have the contact information along with the website. Then comes up is the profile, a quick words about a software engineer uh, with throw hands experience in all the levels of testing, including performance, functional. So this guy is moreover on the testing. Okay, within a quick glance, I'm having that. Then a couple of experiences are being written. I'll talk in a separate video. If you don't have experience, what you can do, I will cover up that. And then we have some of the skills and last educational uh, software engineer, college name, and in multimedia art school name. That's it, that's pretty much it. Now notice very carefully. If you look at any of these resume, you will notice one very strange thing that there is only one page here. So why is that? This is where our checklist needs to come up. And we're going to be coming back and forth onto this one. So let's go ahead and start with the checklist that we have. The first checklist is, is it clean and readable? That is the most important aspect of your resume. Having these kinds of services like Canva makes your resume more clean and readable. Let me walk you through how the things can not be clean and readable. Notice here this name is written in a font which is very, very clean. And if I go ahead and just look onto this, it's very readable. But if I just select this one and I change it to some different font, uh, which is not that much readable, you might think that this is very fancy and it is looking very classic, very different from others, but that is not what you want. There is an ideal definition of what is a clean font and what is not. This is definitely not a clean font. You want to choose a font which is a bit more squarish or a bit more bold, not the bold of this kind, but a squarish bold. So a classic sleek font will always do the work. Although the Canva is always providing you best of the readable possibilities, but make sure you don't just crap it out because you like this font. This is not some design competition happening. Your resume should be very clean and readable. Second point that I can give to you is make sure that white space is your friend. You don't want to cramp up everything in your resume. Look at this. There is so much of the white space in their resume that it automatically looks clean. If there is a space, you don't want to make the font really big so that it covers up entire thing. White space make things more readable, so make sure it is very clean. Somebody will be reading it, so make sure it is readable. So make sure you focus a lot on clean and the readability of your resume. Next thing, is it one page? This is where majority of the people uh, does a lot of mistake. Please make sure, no matter how many work or how much work you have done, your resume should be one and only one page, regardless. Might, you might be having experience of working past in the YouTube or maybe tons of other companies, but you don't want to mention all of them. If it doesn't fit on one page, it doesn't need to go there. This is very essential. Eventually in the college life, people take participation in lots of hackathons, lots of workshops. They might have done four or five internships, 
But if that doesn't fit on a resume, you don't want to put it. Make sure you don't put up everything that you have done in your life. You might have won some of the competition in basketball and cricket and other things. Make sure if it is not relevant to the company, you really don't put it. And if you put it, it should be clean and it should fit in one page. Make sure. If it is important, it needs to go out there. Otherwise, it doesn't need to go there. You can have further on discussion later on. Companies don't need to know that have you won the carom competition when you were in school, they don't care about it. So make sure only the important stuff goes on and you might want to revise your resume again if it is more than one page. Please don't do this mistake. You don't want to carry around three or four page of resume, not even two page. It should be one page, just one side. That's it. Moving on. Are you including the keywords from the job description? Now look at this very closely. This is the profile section. Now profile section, or you can say the job application or anything that you can put up a keyword here, the sentences that you are writing here are actually aligning very closely to what kind of job you're applying for. If it is a job for testing, this sounds a great lines here, only if he knows about it. If somebody is going for an interview where the position hiring is for the React, you probably want to put up similar types of keywords and your experience related to that or probably from the JavaScript world. If you are applying from, for a mobile application development, you might want to show your interest on that. And on top of that, if you're applying for a FinTech company, you might want to write certain lines which shows your interest towards the FinTech companies and towards the mobile application development so that it makes it very clear, yes, this is or this can be the right person. Again, this is why I told you that you might want to have a couple of copies of your resume because usually this profile section and for what job, ro job role you're applying, this usually changes a lot. So this is another checkpoint you might want to do. And make sure you also use some of the keywords from job description. Sometimes when these softwares go through with them, the softwares actually go through with the resume based on the job role that they have provided. So it will give you an extra edge uh, while if software is handling the resume. Another thing is, are you having online link in the resume? This is the most important thing. Look at here very closely. This guy is providing me a website link. Now, if you don't have a website, you can provide a GitHub link as well, but I think it is a worth wise investment if you buy any of the domain name, they are very, very cheap, 500, 600 rupees or probably less than $10. You can host them, them on GitHub, Netlify and tons of other places. But having a website which just highlights all of your project is always a good idea. And now make sure also that if you are applying for a, some company, you are prepared with your link as well. You don't want to just throw up everything that is there on the GitHub. You might want to highlight certain things in your GitHub or your own website that these are the special projects that I've recently completed and this is where I want to talk on. So make sure you have some of the online link. In the world of IT, it is 100% necessary that you have some of the online links. Now these links can always be of different categories. It's always not compulsory to have GitHub link. Probably you're working in a startup or you have launched your own startup and the app is doing good and it has served probably some 100, 200 people. You might want to put up that link too that this is my recent product that I launched up. So having these online link verify your capabilities that this person knows what he's doing and he's already doing it. So make sure you have this online link 100% on your that. Okay, moving on. Another thing that you might want to do is impact over responsibilities. This is a one very common thing. You're going to notice here that in the section of experience, sometimes people write, and in fact, I have seen many of that, people write that uh, in my last job, I was having a responsibility of deploying a website. Now, it doesn't show up your leadership skills. It shows that this guy was having a responsibility and he was fulfilling it up. In fact, you, if you turn up the words a little bit, you put up a little twist that in the last job, I, I was uh, performing these uh, deployment website and I was doing it in such a way that it was doing this much of percentage of more impact to the company. So make sure you, you word it out in such a way that it doesn't look like a boring one and shows that how much impact you were giving by your presence in that company. And also on the top, it should look like you are taking something as a leadership skill. Everybody loves leadership skill, but not to up to that extent that you are having problems in the team, but up to that extent that if somebody is not giving you any orders, you take things on your own hand for the good of the company. So make sure you always take care of this one. Impact over responsibilities. Impact always gets more point. Moving on. Choose the right tech words and software. 
I have seen this many times. People mention that I know uh, Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Probably that's a good thing for the company that you are applying. But make sure you really know your deal with at least 50% of the software, how you deal up with that. And you might want to choose up your software very, very carefully. If you are applying for a company and instead of writing that you know Microsoft Excel, probably you know Photoshop or uh, Adobe XD or Figma, that might give you an extra edge over the others because you have an extra skill. But make sure you choose your tech words and software very, very carefully. Mentioning some of them is always a great idea, but choose it very, very wisely that what kind of software you are choosing up. Is that company going to get any benefit from your extra skills? Or probably not. If there is not any, just totally skip that section. You don't want to put that section even. Moving on. Are you sure about the buzzword that you are putting up? Now, buzzword can be really, really a downtime on the interview. Let's just say, if you are putting up a Docker in your resume, can you really talk about Docker for the next 15 minutes? Are you really sure about it? If you have just watched a couple of YouTube videos and you think, I know what the overview of Docker is, you probably want to skip putting up Docker in your resume. Same goes for machine learning. Just because you have done one workshop on machine learning or you have taken one seminar or online a webinar on that, you probably don't want to put machine learning on your resume because probably that person who is taking an interview might have his PhD in the machine learning or in the Docker he plays every single day. So if you really know the subject, put it out and put it very honestly that I have done a detailed course and I have deployed some of the machines on Docker and that's all I know about Docker. Make sure you are very honest about it and make sure you put these buzzwords only if you have detailed thorough study on them. These buzzwords can really make you that this person is very trendy and goes everything which is trendy and he goes just after them. So having these buzzwords can either make your interview or can kill your interview. So make sure you are very, very cautious about it and you are very honest about what kind of knowledge you have about these buzzwords. And lastly, but not the least, which I'm not really good in, I'll be very honest and accept that I'm no good in the typos. I'm not good in the grammar as well. So make sure you have no typos and no grammar mistakes in your resume. I usually get mine checked one from my friends during my college days, and they usually point out a lot of mistakes that I figure out and I uh, fix them eventually. So again, not everybody is uh, that much finished or polished in the grammar world. I learned it a lot and I'm still learning it a lot. Sometimes uh, English is our second or third or probably fourth language. For me, English is my third language. So I'm not really good in that. So again, it all depends. And uh, but these companies do care about them. So also mention that that English is my second or third language. You will need decent English, not too much high, but make sure in the resume, at least you don't have any typos or grammar. Get it checked through your friends or family members. Just show them and uh, put them a challenge that find out a grammar mistake in this one and fi or find out a typo in that and just fix them up. So these are the checklists that you might want to have. Just make sure you always keep these checklists with you and you don't need to go like hundreds of checklists. Only keep that at here and make sure you do one more thing. Keep it real as real as possible and be proud on whatever the work you have done. Absolutely be proud on that. It's your hard work. You should always be proud on that. Okay, so that's all the time you need to spend on your resume. Please don't worry too much about it. That's all you have to know about resume. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.